Hi, good morning everyone. Welcome. Uh, today is the 1st of January of 2023, so Happy New Year to everyone. And um, I'm here at Casa Rubio's. The idea is to have a flight, a local flight, uh, trying to figure out some uh, issues uh, with the autopilot. Anyway, as we are waiting for the engine to warm up, I'd like to share with you an experience um, I had recently, a negative experience, so that you may, you may avoid it uh, if you happen to have the same problem in the future. So, if you have um, um, a 530 GPS, uh, which I'll show you in a second, you happen to have a GPS which looks like that, and uh, something happens to it, and you need to send it off to uh, Garmin, First of all, uh, it's uh, worth noting that you cannot do that. You can't send it to Garmin yourself. You have to take it to a dealer, a Garmin dealer, and then the dealer needs to send it off to Garmin. So the problem I had with mine was that the, uh, all of a sudden, although the unit was working fine, the screen was coming on and off every 5 to 10 seconds. So since I could not send it off myself, I gave it to my local uh, mechanic, uh, shop and they shipped it off to a dealer and then the dealer in turn shipped it off to Garmin in the UK. Now, when the unit came back and uh, I just uh, put it back in, it was, uh, nothing was functioning. Not with the unit, but with the uh, HSI, okay? Uh, because that's, um, the GPS is connected to the HSI, and uh, through that you can have your autopilot set to nav or heading. Now, I was perplexed because I, did, I didn't really know why, although the GPS unit itself was functioning, the connections with the HSI and uh, the VOR uh, would not work. Now, you may say, well, that's common knowledge to everyone, if it is great, a great lesson for me, but it was not clear to me. Um, so, talking to the to Garmin uh, directly, they said, um, well, if you are the client, we can't really help you, um, you have to go to the dealer. I said, well, but I didn't uh, give it myself to the dealer, it was my mechanic shop that did. They said, well, ask your mechanic shop to talk to the dealer. And that was it. Now, before I hung up the phone, I said to them, but what could be wrong? And they said, well, you know, with the 530 uh, GPS units, because they are a bit old, um, we can't save the configuration through which you have other items connected to the GPS on your plane. So if you don't have the configuration somewhere yourself, uh, then the configuration was erased because we changed uh, a few things in the GPS unit. So I, and I asked and I said, but, but if I can't save the configuration, uh, how could I have it? They said, well, you, you could either have the original design of the connections, now that was done by the previous owner in 2007, uh, or you should have taken pictures of the configuration. And I said, but, but, but how can I access the configuration? That's not in the user's manual. They said, well, for you to do is for your mechanic uh, shop to do or the dealer. So then I, I called the dealer again, I explained to them, um, well, I, I shared my conversation uh, with Garmin and they said, well, we never take pictures. So I was, basically, I was stuck because, uh, in fact, they, they also said to me that it's almost impossible to figure out how the connections were done with the HSI. But anyway, a very helpful uh, um, a guy with quite a bit of experience uh, at the dealer side, in, in the dealer was in Portugal, uh, he helped me over the phone. So we, we had a, a video conference using uh, uh, our phones and um, 
He was trying through uh, the experience he had and other setups he had seen of that same unit, the 530 uh, GPS. We went page by page uh, through the configuration uh, pages and finally we were able to connect the HSI to the GPS. But we were not able to connect the fuel uh, to the GPS because um, apparently when you have a, um, a flight plan into the system and you're using the GPS to navigate then uh, it automatically calculates uh, how much fuel you need for the flight plan you have in the system. So that part of the equation we were not able to solve. So, conclusion, if you have a unit like that, and they, they are quite expensive, um, in fact, to, to replace this with the 760, I think, or 750, whatever it is, it's about $14,000 uh, without the installation, okay? So they're quite expensive units. Um, so if you have one like that, and uh, something goes wrong with it, or in fact before something goes wrong with it, make sure that you get into the configuration menu and you take pictures of the setup. Now you may say, how do you do that? Well, that, that's the tricky bit because it's not in the user's manual. So the way to do it is to press the button enter and then it's on the unit. And as you see Garmin coming on the screen, then you can uh, leave and stop pressing uh, the enter button. Anyway, I hope um, this will be useful to some of you, uh, and thank you for uh, watching. On with our flying now.